Hey folks, Dr. Mike Isertel back for Renaissance Periodization, Fat Loss Dieting Made Simple, video number six. Finally, finally, purposefully creating a calorie deficit. So hold up, we've had five videos so far. What is it that we were talking about in these five quick review? We sorted out food portions, food types, and meals. We're now counting macros on a stable plan. We know what to eat and when. We know pretty much how much we're eating, and maybe we're not specifically trying to hit certain amounts of things, especially calories, we're just eating to hunger, but we're very well aware because we're very good at tracking and planning how much we're eating. No, not, not anything, nothing purposeful yet, but we're very, very aware of the situation. And of course, we know how much water to drink or fluids to drink and what kind of supplements to take and which ones to avoid, all from the last lectures. Now, this whole process sounds like we do it instantly, but because we recommended that you sort of start easy and do maybe one or two of these things at a time, like first learn you know, about how to track your calories and macros, then start eating a little healthier, then start planning distinct meals, so on and so forth. This process for some folks of getting just to here from just eating whatever can take months. Okay, and that's okay because of two reasons. First, getting used to the approach is unbelievably important because if you take this approach with a calorie deficit, it can be so tough all at the same time to both learn the new stuff and impose a calorie deficit, failure is super high. But if you learn the new stuff and get really used to it first, then imposing the calorie deficit is just kind of like a minor detail, relatively speaking, and you have a much higher chance of success. Secondly, just from doing all these things, especially eating mostly healthy foods and eating to hunger, not stuffing yourself, because healthy foods are so much more filling than junkier foods and we're eating more healthy foods a lot of time, people will start to lose a ton of weight and fat during this sort of onboarding period. So yeah, it may take months, but you look at your body weight and you're like, okay, three months later, I'm ready to start imposing a calorie deficit officially, but I'm already down like 15 pounds. This is crazy. And I feel 100% fine because I haven't been trying to do anything. I've been pushing my body in any way of just eating healthier with a bit more regimented schedule. Now, for many people, it will take that long, months, plural. For some people, it may only take a few days or a few weeks, especially if they're used to dieting already. So if you know how macros work and all this other stuff, you're just kind of reviewing this stuff and you want a real good shot at just a real good diet, you've done tons of diets before, this stuff is pretty simple. It can take you a few days or weeks and then you're ready. Biggest take home from here is don't rush. Only start imposing a willful deficit when you know you're in a good place and you know how your body for lack of a better term, how you feel with the whole process. If eating in this regimented manner is pretty much second nature to you, you're good to start. If it still feels weird and awkward and like, oh, what am I doing? And you're trouble measuring and all this other stuff, give it some more time. Don't impose a deficit right away because the deficit makes everything harder. And I do mean everything, all about your life, including your diet. So here we go. Now, once you're used to it, once you're here, ready to go, you're ready to go and purposefully try to lose fat. Two of the most powerful weapons you have to this extent are a caloric reduction via diet, of course, which we'll learn how to do here, and a regular weight training and or activity of any kind that burns fat, retains and builds muscle. Those two things, calorie reduction via diet and regular exercise, are the magic ingredients that power all of fat loss, right? And the goal here will be to lose somewhere between half a percent and 1% body weight per week for somewhere between six to 12 weeks on purpose until we stop that fat loss process to give our body a chance to get a break, to recover, to resensitize, to normalize. Potentially we'd have lost all the weight we wanted, but if we have weight to lose more, then we wait until this whole process cools down and then we try again. So our first run at a fat loss phase is going to be between half a percent and one percent of body weight per week and between six to 12 weeks. Now, that's generally, for beginners, we recommend something like close to half a percent per week, nice and easy, and something like six to nine week diet for their first try. For more advanced folks, which this is not their first rodeo, multiple diets in very successfully, by the way, you're not advanced if you failed a bunch of diets, you're only advanced if you succeeded. Those folks can push up to one percent a week which is a lot, like if you're 200 pounds, that's two pounds a week that you're losing and for nine to 12 weeks. And potentially that's a huge change and you only graduate to earning, the, you know, you always have the right to do it. You only graduate to a high probability of success if you've been successful with less aggressive diets before. 
Big, huge point here. They give no bonus points anywhere in life for you trying some shit that's too hard for you and failing out miserably. When you're going to try something, try the easy version first. If you do really well, success. And then maybe you can go harder later or maybe not. I just do mostly easy diets all the time. I just do enough of them to get to where I need to go. Now, what about calorie cuts? Roughly speaking, very approximate thermodynamics here from tons of research is that if you cut 500 calories per day out of your diet, that generally results in about one pound of tissue loss, hopefully mostly fat, per week. If you cut about 750 calories out of your diet per day, right? So if you're eating 2750 and you go to 2000, that's going to, at least for some time, lead to something like a pound and a half lost per week. And lastly, if you are creating a 1000 calorie deficit, from your baseline maintenance diet, then you're going to be losing something like two pounds per week. All right. Those are just the rough numbers. And then the big question is how big of a calorie cut should you make? Okay. To reach your body weight goals that you want. Because you said you have to lose between 0.5 and 1% per week. How does that translate to calories? It's real simple. You're going to want, first thing is your current body weight then your weight loss goal per week is a percent, right? Then you're going to multiply the first thing, your body weight, by the percent as a fraction, uh, or sorry, the percent as a decimal. And then you're going to multiply that by 500 calories. What? What kind of Einstein shit are we on? Super easy example. And you can absolutely just pause the video right now, right after this, look at the screen. And the, the example right below tells you exactly how this works. So here, I'll just talk through the example real quick. Your current body weight, say, 150 pounds. So it's 150 pounds multiplied by 0 0.005, which is 0.5%, and that's 0.75 pounds per week of weight loss, which is cool. And to generate that, we multiply that by 500, step four, and we get 375 daily calorie deficit. It's that easy. So if you weigh 150 pounds and you wanna lose 0.5% per week, you have to create a deficit of 375 calories. So how do we go about creating that deficit? First, huge point, you want to create as much of that deficit as possible just by adding physical activity. As, now, as long as you're not, it's not taking too much time, you're not super run down, if you can be more active and burn more calories just by walking or cycling or anything else you like to do, you can get one of those calorie trackers and I, I use a step tracker. And if you can do, there's all these awesome step calculations online for how many steps costs, how many calories based on your body weight, run the numbers, get more steps, get more activity. And if you chop off a big part of that, here's the thing, you, you lose just as much fat as you otherwise would, but you get to eat a very similar amount of food. So you want to eat as much food as possible because that's going to make you not super hungry later. It's just much more sustainable. Also, physical activity burns almost exclusively fat. It barely risks muscle. If you take food out of your diet, it risks a little bit more muscle. And it's super healthy for you. So it's just awesome all around, right? It's super healthy, super easy, less hunger, all that. Now, the remainder that you just want to cut from your diet, because you can't just like exercise more indefinitely, especially if you have a big deficit, you know, 750 cal deficit a day, you, you know, adding that in cardio is kind of insane, right? Especially repeatedly. So what you want to do is cut the rest out from your fats. Okay, so you have, let's say 375, and now we have just 200 calories left to cut because 175, we're doing more activity. Sweet. We have 200 calories. We want to take that, and cut out however many grams of fat, right? Fat is nine calories per gram. We're gonna cut out as many of those fats as we need to take the, to take care of all the rest of that 200 calories, so from our diet. Now, that's uh, very good, sensible advice until we get to 0.3 grams per pound of fats per day. So if you're 200 pounds, if you drop below 60 grams of fat per day, all this bad hormonal stuff tends to happen. We don't wanna do that. So if we reach our bottom fat limit, but we still have calories to cut, we take the rest out from carbs and we never touch protein. That's it. It's that simple. Do as much activity as you can. Whatever's left after the increase in activity, personal preference, cut from fats. If you get to 0.3, whatever's left from fats, cut from carbs. Done, you're done. Super, 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 super simple. Now. It is super simple, especially in the short term, but maintaining the deficit can be a little bit difficult. Your body might, some people's bodies adapt a lot, some not so much, but in general, on average, bodies adapt to an imposed deficit. And sometimes they slow down how much activity you're doing, your body temperature can decline, your metabolism can decline a little bit, your food consumption pattern change, or you're actually, how much you're actually eating is a little bit higher than what you think. All this stuff, 
your body is trying to get you to not lose weight. That's how we have to have YouTube videos to tell you how to lose weight is because your body from millions of years of evolution is designed to try to fight it. So you may get to a situation where for more than two weeks in a row, you're not hitting your body weight loss goal. Like if your goal is like a pound a week and last week you lost 0.8 and this week you lost 0.6 pounds on average, uh, you're not you're not going to hit your goal that you want at the end of the diet. So then what you should do is take 250 calories, remove it from your diet and or increase activity. Usually by this point, your activity is pretty high. Just going to remove 250 calories from a combination of fats and carbs. And then voila, that 250 extra is going to push you a little bit ahead. You'll probably start to lose faster. If two weeks later, you're still not losing at the speed you want, or there's another correction, you take away 250 again, and that's just how it works. That's it, right? Now, this video that we just did gave you the formula, essentially, to lose weight safely and effectively in a six to 12 week amount of time, right? Now, you did have to do some math and some calculations and some adjustments. Cool thing, shameless plug, the Renaissance Periodization Diet Coach app, the RP Diet Coach app, which is available on your iTunes store and Google Play, does this all of this for you. It even plans all of your meals out. It, it, you never have to make any changes or do any math. It, when you're not on track, you just have to type into the app how much you want to lose and by when. And every few weeks, the app will be like, hey, uh, you should probably eat a little less uh, if you want to lose weight. Do you want us to change your diet? You say, yes, hell yeah, keep me on my goal. You click yes, and it automatically changes your diet. You don't have to know anything. You just do what it says, and you lose all the weight you want. Okay? Super shameless plug. It's $15 a month. Super cheap. Do you have to get it? No, hell no. You can do all this by yourself, but if you don't want to, the app can help. And if not, just use this video and you'll be absolutely golden. It's easy, especially with the RP Diet app, but definitely by yourself as well, to plan out to do this right. Because none of this is hard, intellectually hard. However, practically getting it done has a few major impediments. Lots of people start diets. Very few people finish diets successfully. So in the next video, we're going to talk about the very common known difficulties in dieting and give you some good tips to weave around them so you can get all the way to your successful end of your diet goal. Folks, we'll see you for the next video next week.